Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well, as I always say. I got a pretty, uh, pretty good story for you this week. It takes place in the Florida Everglades. And before I jump into that, don't forget to let me know how your week was. I had a very trying week, we'll put it that way. So in that sense, I would like to dedicate this video to my grandfather who passed away just this last week. He was pretty much 87 years old. He was two days away, but still, I consider him to be 87 years old. I consider him to be a really good role model in my life. He always believed in me and all that stuff. So I'm going to dedicate this video to him. And if you have any nice little stories about your grandparents, then feel free to share them down in the comments. It'd be nice to hear some. So, yeah, let's jump into the story. Uh, pull up a stump, as always, and... Let's go to Florida. So it has been many years since I've told anybody about my experience. I normally keep it to myself as anyone who I would tell it to would just think I'm crazy. And to be honest, I don't blame them either. If someone told me this story, I would believe they were a lunatic. So back then I had just got out of high school and I wanted to do something fun. I decided that I'll kayak through the Florida Everglades by myself. My mom hates the idea, and my dad thinks I'll probably be fine, as long as I don't make any dumb mistakes. I have been camping, backpacking, and kayaking for about seven years by then, so I was fairly experienced in bushcraft. Ergo, like my dad, I thought I'd be fine. Boy, was I wrong. As a precaution, my dad gives me my great-grandfather's old, quote, groundhog rifle. And if you're wondering what he called a groundhog rifle, it's an M1903 Springfield. So regardless of this, I grab my stuff and I rush off into the great unknown. I decided that I wanted to kayak around the Thousand Island portion of the Everglades. I pushed off at a small island known as Chukoloski, and I made my way into the wild. I was ecstatic at this point. Finally, I get to enjoy my favorite hobby with no one around to bother me. I camp at this small dinky campground known as Mormon Key, and there's a picture he has, and I'll post that here. It was a 10 plus mile kayaking trip to get there, plus part of that was just navigated through the mangroves. Needless to say, I was tired as hell. So I make camp, I cook dinner, I watch the sunset, and I go to sleep. I wake up at some point to howling in the distance, and it kind of sounds like a wolf. But the problem is, the wolves have been extinct in the Everglades since like 1910 or something. I'm kind of really weirded out, but there is a body of water between me and the howling, so I don't really dwell on it. I wake up the next morning and I make up a quick breakfast, and I continue heading south on my kayak. I end up going down the Lostman's River, and I find a place down the river to camp again. So I set up camp, I eat, and I sleep. Now, that night would be my last comfortable night of sleep for the rest of the trip, and quite possibly, to be honest, the rest of my life. I wake up the next day refreshed and head further down the river. Eventually, I hit the mainland. I walk about 1.5 miles east before I decide to turn back. This was a mistake. I tripped and fell, and I hit my head and knocked myself clean out. You know, screw me, right? I wake up what I think is about two hours later. I pick myself up, orient myself, and then start heading back towards the kayak. I get to where the kayak was, and it's gone. The rope is still tied to a mangrove, but the middle is chewed through. And in a minute, it finally hits me. My kayak is gone. My tent, most of my food, my water... My other gear, and most importantly, my transportation, is gone. I decide to get to dry land as I don't want to be in the mangroves at night. I get to dry land and I eat a granola bar and decide to head northeast in the morning to try and, hopefully, get some help. I fall asleep with my head on my pack and next to me is a fire. I wake up only four hours later to the noise of howling, wolf howling. Once again, I'm baffled, seeing as they should be extinct around here. I shine my light into the bush, and I see this absolutely gargantuan wolf 
bigger than I've ever seen anywhere. Like, probably the size of almost a rhino. I flip out and add what little dry wood I have to the fire. I spend the night clutching my rifle next to a dying fire. And it eventually leaves, but I don't want to let down my guard. At all. Around sunrise, I immediately head northeast, and at this point, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and I just want to get help. I'm slowly trudging through knee-high water. At this point, I'm considering ditching the rifle to get rid of just some weight, but then I remember those wolves. I keep going on and on and on, mindlessly checking every ten or so minutes to make sure that I am on course. In the middle of these mangroves is a small dry area. I figured that I could rest here for a short while. And I walk into this clearing, and I see a structure. It's a friggin' pyramid in the Everglades. Think like an Aztec pyramid, but a lot smaller. I am completely dumbfounded at what a pyramid would be doing this far out here. I don't recall anything about the local tribes ever building pyramids or ever doing this. I needed to keep moving, but I just found a hidden pyramid in the middle of the friggin' Everglades. Archaeologists and historians would kill to find this. I figure I need to stop and at least look at the place. I climb up to the top and there's a pit. It's just a dark pit. But out of the pit I can hear something faint. I get in on all fours so I can try to hear it better, and I realize it's like a wailing coming from the pit, griefful, painful wailing. I promptly get up and try to just get the hell out of there. In a rush, I trip. Are you starting to see a pattern with me yet? After tripping, the wailing turns into straight up screaming. This absolute ear-piercing scream sounds like a banshee. I am convinced that anybody within a 10 mile radius should have heard this. It was absolutely deafening. I started hurrying back down, but then I see those damn dogs, or wolves, or whatever they were. There's a pack of five of them, all completely huge. Not quite as big as I remember them to be, but still huge nonetheless. I drop my pack and I climb up a cypress tree. I fire all five of my rounds into the biggest one there. He bleeds out under the tree, while the screaming from the pyramid is just getting louder and louder. The pack drags away the dead dog into the mangroves. I take my opportunity to jump down, and I start booking it northeast. I left my pack to save weight, and I'm going to go through the mangroves as fast as I possibly can. I even throw aside the rifle, as I have no ammo for it, and at this point it's just dead weight. Eventually, after an hour, I can't hear the screaming anymore. I'm dehydrated as hell, and hungry, but I try to keep moving forward. I find myself on a road, like a loop road scenic drive thing, with a bunch of police cars. They hesitate when they see me, because I look like I've been through hell and back. They get me water and a granola bar and tell me to sit tight for an ambulance. When I asked how they knew to find me, they said some guy on the road had called in about hearing incessant gunshots a couple hours ago, and they have been searching ever since. I get to the hospital, and the police interrogate me. I hesitate. I don't want to tell them what actually happened for obvious reasons. I don't want to end up in the loony bin. So I just told them that I got lost, and I fired those shots at an alligator. They seem to accept it, and they leave me alone. My family comes up in hysterics to see me. I confide in my dad about what actually happened. Naturally, he doesn't believe me and says that me being dehydrated just must have made me hallucinate really bad or something. I go home, and I keep bringing it up. Eventually... He has me admitted to a psychiatrist for delusions and hallucinations. Gee, thanks, Dad. I brought up the story to two different people, and both had the same response. But I'm never going back to that place again. I just want to forget about all this and for just forget it ever happened. But I felt like I needed to tell someone. I don't care if you believe me or not, as no one else does. I just needed to get it out. And... I don't know what I found out there, and it will probably stay that way. 
good night. I'm going to bed. So, what did you think of that? It's a pretty wild story, wasn't it? Now, before we get into some of the other details of the story, and I'll let you guys, as always, decide if you think it's real or if it's not, I do remember a while ago hearing about, like, urban legends about pyramids in the Everglades. So I did search it up a bit, and I kind of poured through some other stuff, went down a bit of a rabbit hole, found a video of a guy in a Michael Jackson outfit in a wrestling match, which I thought was great, but that's not relevant. I did find a couple things, including an article from the Miami New Times from 2014 about two maps that were found that detail that there are pyramids in the Florida swamps or Florida Everglades. I'll link that article below, and I'll also link this website called lostworlds.org because it has certain quotes that I'm going to read off, and you guys can go read it and go down the rabbit hole yourself and see what you come up with. So the first one says, I was skimming through some musty documents, handwritten letters, and crumbling photographs in a vintage-looking green filing cabinet. I picked up a browned and well-thumbed folder labeled Florida Archaeology, when two letters and some detailed diagrams fell out onto my lap. I scanned through the documents quickly, glancing at a pair of old-looking maps. Then an oft-repeated phrase in the letters leapt out, Pyramids in the Everglades. The letters are typed on aged paper and addressed to Valentine. The first was mailed in April of 1970 and the second in June of 1971. Both make this outrageous claim in starkly calm language, namely that there are undiscovered pyramids throughout the Everglades and other parts of Florida from a previously unknown civilization. I recently talked with a man who lives on a ranch near Imokili, I hope I'm saying that right, who claims to have been in the Big Pyramid in the Big Cypress Swamp. L. Frank Hudson writes this in the first yellow letter. He says that there is stairs leading down from the room into an underground passage that's full of snakes. The next letter from 1971 is on a greenish paper with stylized typeface was even more concrete claiming. We visited a stone pyramid made of smooth face stone. It reaches down to the ground as far as probing rod will go, which makes me think that it may be down to the bedrock which is at least 65 feet deep. Nearby is a wall that seems to be a mile long. In other words, he has seen the pyramids, and there are more that he wrote, because the same man that told me of visiting, or rather seeing, a similar stone pyramid in the middle of a mangrove swamp, just off Lostman's River in the Ten Thousand Island. It continues on from there and says, I've also been told of a stone pyramid with a room inside of it, Still sitting in the middle of a cow pasture just off the Peace River on a Florida ranch, with still another wall nearby, I'm beginning to think that the lost civilization here in Florida may have been more extensive than I first imagined. And like I said, I'll leave that article or articles in the description and you can make your own conclusions. But I just thought it was a pretty cool story that kind of brings up some of that stuff like, you know, what happened in the past kind of thing? What civilizations were there in North America? You know, and you never know even how old these pyramids were. They could be 10, 20,000 years old. You just don't know. Because, you know, the Earth is a big place, really. Anyways, I am definitely just rambling on here. So I will let you go and do your own research if you want to. Or you can leave a like on the video. Or a dislike if that does anything anymore. And you can like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And like I said, I'm dedicating this video to my late grandfather. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video. So stay happy, healthy, and hopefully you all have a better week than I did. So I'll see you then.